Welcome to Daily Overdose. I want you to ponder these questions. What are you becoming? The big question is not what am I getting paid here? The big question is what am I becoming? Because true happiness is not contained in what you get. Happiness is contained in what you become. Are we living the lives we want to live? Or are we living stereotyped lives based on phony values? Usually they're a combination of both. A kind of compromise which says surely other people must have some idea of what constitutes the good life. After all, there are so many of them. But when we look closer, we see that they're living shadow lives, as Mumford calls them. In competition, ice skating, you've seen a couple match each other's movements almost perfectly. It's called shadow skating, I believe. They try to match each other's movements so perfectly that each might be the other's shadow. You know, everybody has a different temperament and personality. And it's something that has to be developed, you know, over a period of time. If you're too shy, you should really learn to push that into a small corner and speak up more. If you're a little too loud, maybe you should, you know, calm down just a little bit. But we shouldn't try to just radically become someone else. But that's what sophistication and civilization is supposed to do, is to make us civil. And all so-called civilized peoples have increasingly become crazy and self-destructive because through excessive thinking they have lost touch with reality. A person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thought. So he loses touch with reality and lives in a world of illusion. By thoughts I mean specifically chatter in the skull perpetual and compulsive repetition of words of reckoning and calculating we become what we think about most of the time and that's the strangest secret this is why thinking is so vital this is why a goal is so important because we will become that this is why people who set goals achieve them the trouble with men is not in achieving their goals they do that it's in establishing them the only thing about a man that is a man is his mind. Everything else you can find in a pig or a horse. It's true. And so if we're going to develop something, this is a good place to start. To think deliberately and with a purpose. To spend a little time each day before a blank sheet of paper with our goal perhaps written at the top to come up with some fresh, new and exciting ideas. How to get the results you want. The principal reasons for failure are lack of confidence and too much effort. Many people block answers to their prayers by failing to fully comprehend the workings of their subconscious mind. When you know how your mind functions, you gain a measure of confidence. You must remember, whenever your subconscious mind accepts an idea, it immediately begins to execute it. It uses all its mighty resources to that end and mobilizes all the mental and spiritual laws of your deeper mind. This law is true for good or bad ideas. Consequently, if you use it negatively, it brings trouble, failure, and confusion. When you use it constructively, it brings guidance, freedom, and peace of mind. The right answer is inevitable when your thoughts are positive, constructive, and loving. From this, it is perfectly obvious that the only thing you have to do in order to overcome failure is to get your subconscious to accept your idea or request by feeling its reality now, and the law of your mind will do the rest. Turn over your request with faith and confidence, and your subconscious will take over and answer for you. You will always fail to get results by trying to use mental coercion. Your subconscious mind does not respond to coercion. It responds to your faith or conscious mind acceptance. Your failure to get results may also arise from such statements as, things are getting worse. I will never get an answer. I see no way out. It is hopeless. I don't know what to do. I'm all mixed up. When you use such statements, you get no response or cooperation from your subconscious mind. Like a soldier marking time, you neither go forward nor backward. In other words, you don't get anywhere. 
If you get into a taxi and give a half dozen different directions to the driver in five minutes, he would become hopelessly confused and probably would refuse to take you anywhere. It is the same when working with your subconscious mind. There must be a clear-cut idea in your mind. You must arrive at the definite decision that there is a way out, a solution to the vexing problem in sickness. Only the infinite intelligence within your subconscious knows the answer. When you come to that clear-cut conclusion in your conscious mind, your mind is then made up, and according to your belief, it is done unto you. Easy does it. A house owner once remonstrated with a furnace repairman for charging $200 for fixing the boiler. The mechanic said, I charged five cents for the missing bolt and $199.95 for knowing what was wrong. Similarly, your subconscious mind is the master mechanic, the all-wise one, who knows ways and means of healing any organ of your body as well as your affairs. Decree health and your subconscious will establish it. But relaxation is the key. Easy does it. Do not be concerned with details and means, but know the end result. Get the feel of the happy solution to your problem, whether it is health, finances, or employment. Remember how you felt after you had recovered from a severe state of illness? Bear in mind that your feeling is the touchstone of all subconscious demonstration. Your new idea must be felt subjectively in a finished state, not the future, but as coming about now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please like and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss another video.